How's everybody doing? All right. Uh, just got this in the mail today. This particular locomotive here, I'll get into this here in just one second. This particular locomotive, this uh, 686, depending on the set you bought, came with one of two tenders, okay? One was a typical eight-wheel tender with sound. The other was this bad boy right here. A six-axle, 12-wheel tender, okay? Depending on the set you bought, that's what you got. Now, you could also, Lionel, back in the day, and they probably still do, they had a specific set with rolling stock, track, locomotive, and tender. And depending what you got is what you got for a tender. I really wanted this tender, so I ordered it. Now, this one will get cleaned up. It uh, needs, it has a broken wire here. Um, that goes to this roller and this one is probably okay but I'll probably repair I'll probably change it anyway just because this also has a coil coupler similar to the one from 1947 which there's a specific spot a uh, track you have and when you roll that over that and push a button the coupler will release the cars behind it. Okay, so I got this today. I'm looking forward to cleaning it up, and I don't have anything plugged in today for uh, power, so we won't try the whistle out. Uh, with the wire broken, it'll probably still work, but let's just put it aside for right now, and uh, I will clean that up over the next few days couple other things that happen here is I received the knob for the whistle on this transformer in the mail the other day. It's now installed. Uh, so when I get ready to try the whistle out on this, I won't need to use the small uh, transformer. I can use this one. Okay, that's a couple things. Now, I have mentioned that when I first started back in the model railroading, I had started with HO. I have a lot of HO locomotives. I have a lot of HO rolling stock. And I have a few buildings, some of which I built. And I said, you know, I done tried my hand at scratch building and I, I, I uh, built a lobster shack. Well, I thought I'd packed it away. It turns out I did not. Here it is. Okay. The pier pilings whatnot here even with the barnacles and the shack itself is completely scratch built the lobster traps lobster men uh boat and whatnot and uh, are all kits you can buy and of course i dressed it up it needs some more details i want to put a light on it there needs to be um whoop you can see i just broke off the uh it, it's very delicate here. I'll have to glue that back on. Uh, it needs a, a hose from here to, there's a pump, uh, a hand nozzle here, and I need to put that on still. And there's a few other things that need some more oil stains here and whatnot. But again, I was I, packing things up, and uh, I thought I had packed this away, and it turns out I did not. So... I thought I'd show it to you. This is the scale I had intended to model in uh, before starting on Lionel uh, and falling in love with Lionel. Now, luckily for me, uh, they do make O-scale lobster traps and all of the accessories I need here. So I can scratch build one of these in O-scale. Okay, being from New England, of course, I want a little bit of a seacoast scene on my layout, so there will be something uh, there for for the the you know coast. Um, what will I do with the HO stuff? I may have a smaller layout with HO. I may incorporate it with Lionel. Uh, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, Hobbits, of course, and 
and whatnot. Um, we'll see. And again, it's a hobby. It's meant to be fun. Uh, I'll get into that, of course, here again in a little bit. So we'll see what I do with this when I get moved and settled in. Um, anyway, I took this one apart the other day, the 686, and discovered why it would not go in reverse and do exactly what I wanted it to do. Oh, I should have left this out here. For starters, it's a totally different motor setup. We'll move this out of the way. I have a wire here that needs to be resoldered, and there's a couple here. I will be changing those. This is referred to as an E unit. When I took the E unit out, I noticed there should be a piece in here with uh, little like steps on it that this piece grabs when it. And when you throw this other switch, that grabs that and pulls it to either tell it to go in reverse, stop, or forward. That is missing. That little drum that goes in there is missing. Somebody had put electrical tape on this to keep it in place and keep it out of these little fingers that are in there so it wouldn't be shorting out, causing problems. Then they did, at one point, they put in... A new wire soldered it in there oh, right next to the old wire I don't know why this wire and of course this one uh, should go here okay so I will be unsoldering they make a tool that takes these e-units apart I don't have it and uh, I probably won't for a while um, I could so in the meantime I will be coming in from back here with a soldering gun and unsoldering these and soldering in a new wire, okay, to go here where it belongs. Um, this wire right here also goes to here, and because it broke off, it, they are delicate, they're very old, uh, I will put a new wire on, and I may even, you know, rewire the rest of it. One of the other things they also did that I noticed when I got it apart, this wire here was jumpered from where it is here, to here okay i believe that is why it would only go it was here soldered in and this is why it would not do what it a norm what the other locomotives have done is somebody that probably uh, that little drum that goes in there uh had a meltdown uh, i did have a locomotive with that problem the uh the 1666 um, the original one that I got, it was a non-running locomotive, and when I got into it, that drum was a warped mess in there. So, uh, I had ordered one to replace it, and then, of course, I got the donor locomotive, and its E-unit was fine. The drum was fine, everything was fine. So what I did, I just unsoldered all of that and put it into the other locomotive. So I do have another drum that will be going in here. And then once I get this rewired, it will, of course, at that point, do what it's supposed to do. Um, this is, as you can see, it's a totally different setup for running. This worm gear goes down in here. On another gear that runs the drive wheels okay so uh, this will get cleaned up down in here there was there's pro there's a lot of grease in there okay and and somebody went really overboard on the grease so I'll be using a lot of electronic cleaner spray for that and probably a whole thing of q-tips I'll be taking this unit apart and doing some soldering and again new wires where they're needed um, and getting rid of this jumper and whatnot <clears throat> I will be doing that here probably in the next few days and again you won't see my soldering skills they absolutely stink uh, so I'll be doing all of that offline and then I'll show you and when everything is back together before I put the shell back on I'll have it here and it'll be running um, I wanted to talk a bit about the other about checking your wires when I uh, was putting the other locomotive back together a couple things 
that also was a smoke. I need to stop doing that. That also was a, has a smoke chamber, and it was somebody had really overused that. And um, the wire, you can see the green here to here. It snapped right at the top here. Okay, this is what I mean about checking your wires. Okay, I've taken the covering off of it. Uh, I started cleaning that up and I got the cap out to see if there was something I could do with the other one. <clears throat> Sadly, it was too far deteriorated. The other thing I found while I was cleaning it up were uh, corn kernels, popcorn kernels. <laughs> Some kid, I got a good laugh out of that actually. Some kid back in the 1950s uh, uh, thought, gee, what if? And put corn kernels in there. So that unit uh, pretty much is toast. Now, I don't care. I put the unit back together. It runs just fine. Um, when I finally get settled in into our new home and I have a bigger area, um, if I really want the smoke unit in the other one to work, I will find one. They're out there. Even if I have to get a wrecked locomotive as a parts uh, locomotive, that will happen. This one, I'm pretty sure, smokes. It's a whole lot cleaner, uh, as you can see. There's not a lot of uh, you know, buildup around this. There's a little bit in the stack. I don't know if you can see it in there or not. It's the white in there in the stack. There's a little bit of buildup, but not much. So it wasn't used very often. Um, probably after the corn kernel incident with the other one, the parents probably said that's enough and uh, put it away. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But anyway, this one is going to get a thorough cleaning. And again, it is coated in grease. There's going to be a lot of uh, um, electronic cleaner, a lot of isopropyl alcohol and uh, cotton swabs used on this one because the trucks are, of course, I showed you these. They are just absolutely, there was grease here where there does not need to be grease. Um, and the other one looks even worse in some instances. There is a wad of stuff here and you can see here. This, somebody went totally overboard on this thing, okay? A little white lithium grease and some three-in-one oil and that's all you need. And just every now and then a little white lithium and some three-in-one oil. The other thing I need to do, and I have not done it yet, as you can see, I do not have the water slide decals back on this tender yet. Again, it has been crazy busy around here um, the last week, and I just have not had the chance to sit down and do this. I will show you the decals. Um, <clears throat> This is, uh, the, there was the gray version of this that had uh, black, uh, excuse me, white lettering. And this version had the silver. Uh, there's also, you can get black. Uh, I don't know what that, which one that would be for. Probably a different, a different locomotive. These will be going on this soon. Um, real soon, probably sometime here in the next few days, because we do want to shoot a video of this running. This is, the, of course, the 1947 that was the wife's dad, belonged to her dad, who is no longer with us. And we want to set up a little oval in the living room with the transformer and this and the cars and uh, have them running. So the family can see that after all these years, this is now running once again, okay? So that'll be getting done, and then this will get packed away, ready for the move, okay? And I probably will not be doing a whole lot more um, with, I will be cleaning this up and, you know, testing it, making sure it works. Once I get this one finished and this done, We'll be getting pretty close to closing on this house. Um, we have a lot of other things that have to get done. We are uh, for buying a house. We found a place back east we really like. Uh, so there's not going to be a whole lot of time to be uh, messing around with stuff. If I squeeze something in, fantastic. I'll do it. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was I was mistaken, pleasantly, that uh, not many people were doing O-Gage anymore. Uh, I've sent digging around online looking for, for tips and whatnot. I have discovered uh, quite a few people actually are doing O-Scale, Lionel and whatnot, and there are quite a few... Uh, um, layouts that are, these people have some pretty good size layouts in their basements or in a spare room. I, I don't know which. Uh, one guy even has on his layout, uh, he, he probably has some young kids because when uh, he was showing off one of his trains going around, he, it passed some Lego buildings with some Lego figures. So, you know, not exactly Lionel specific and, and to scale, but I imagine um, his kids loved it. And again, it's a hobby. It's meant to be fun. This guy put him on there. He had it on the video. So, you know, he is having fun with the hobby and he's getting his kids involved. The other thing I've seen, which is fantastic, is um, a company called Menards. I They sold hardware and other things, has, has gotten into the O scale and HO scale market with rolling stock and buildings. Um, I was shocked. Uh, I've seen some reviews on the rolling stock and for the money you're spending, the reviews are all pretty positive. Uh, so for somebody getting into the hobby that can't afford say Lionel or can't afford to start looking for some of this, you know, vintage stuff. Um, the one thing Menards did not have, they did put out an engine uh, a diesel electric engine uh, a little over a year ago. They made 200 and they sold out within a couple of days. As far as I can tell, they have not produced anything more recently. Okay, so I mean, but if you've got a couple of old locomotives laying around and not a lot of rolling stock, from what I'm seeing of the rolling stock, it's pretty good. The reviews are all pretty positive on it for the most part. Um, the buildings, there's some O-scale buildings. The prices are reasonable. Uh, I may invest in a few when we get moved and I start putting a layout together because from what I saw, I liked. Um, I'm going to put my own touches on them. And again, I, uh, going back to this, I will say, you know, I scratch built this and some of the kits I have, I've painted and, and I've, I've done a little uh, kit bashing and whatnot. There's a couple of, a uh, few people out there. Uh, Jason Jensen Trains is a good uh, a source for learning how to do things like, he He seems to like seacoast scenes. He's the one who showed how to do the barnacles and some of the pilings. Uh, Foscale Models is another one. Uh, he is very good. Uh, some of his models, he actually produces models, uh, kits for sale as does Jason Jensen trains right now. He just started. The other person who I think is an absolute artist is a guy from British Columbia, and he goes by the handle Boomer Diorama. I recommend highly checking out his videos, okay? The man, I believe, if, if and, and I, I, I may be wrong, but he did modeling for... Um, uh, miniatures and whatnot for, I think, movies or television shows or something. The, the guy has done this kind of thing a lot of, most of his life. And the models and what he puts out on his uh, um, railroad uh, <clears throat> is absolutely phenomenal, okay? The, the man is an absolute artist. Um, and uh, he is a lot of fun to watch. He's very, he's very describes what he's doing. He scratch builds a lot of his stuff. Um, and he's good at it. Okay. So, I mean, there's a lot of resource and a lot of what I've learned on some of these smaller, on the smaller thing here, of course, I can, I can transfer to, um, bigger stuff, O scale. And if I buy a, an O scale, uh, uh, building from Menards, they're already built by the way, and uh, they're pretty detailed from what I've seen, but everybody, were, modelers want to play with their own stuff. So there'll be other details added. There'll be 
uh, painting that's done to it or whatnot to make it mine because you don't want something on your layout that looks like somebody else's on their layout. You want it to be unique. It may be the same building, but you'll have your own touch. Put your own style on it. So, but if you're going to look at HO and learning how to paint and learning how to build um, from scratch building to, <clears throat> excuse me, kit bashing to uh, building a kit, I'd recommend checking out Jason Jensen Trains, Foscale Models, and Boomer Diorama. There are probably quite a few more out there, but those are the three that I started watching and I started learning from how to how to do a lot of this stuff. And this is by no means perfect. It could be a lot better. Um, it was like, this is my first try at actually scratch building. It needs some more details. Uh, I got to fix the uh, chimney. There needs to be a few more oil stains around this oil, uh, fuel uh, thing here. And it needs a hose um, from it to, there's a... There's a handle, uh, a nozzle down here. It's part of the uh, leg, but it needs a fuel hose from here to that that will reach a boat that's tied up here. It needs a light over the door. It needs some more stuff and a few seagulls. And I have the seagulls. I haven't painted them yet. I have uh, lobster buoys. Again, they have not been painted yet. Um, there's a few other details. Uh, what will I do with this when I'm done? I don't know. Uh, this was what I intended to get into. And then, of course, I fell in love with H, uh, with O scale. So we'll see. Uh, Hobbits on the layout. Again, a fan fantasy. Uh, like I said, I did see a guy with dinosaurs on his layout. There is a guy running O scale with Lego uh, people and Lego buildings. So it's a hobby. It's meant to be fun have fun with it. That's what I'm going to do. That's what these guys have done. And uh, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Anyway, that's everything I have for today. Um, the next video, I will hopefully be showing you, uh, maybe I'll even put them on at, while I'm shooting a video. And again, I said, if you see me mis make a mistake, it, I, it, it's, it's, you know, you're going to see my mistakes as well as whatever. Uh, because I'm not going to hold anything back. So I will probably put these on while shooting a video. If I can keep my big fat fingers out of the way, <clears throat> I have to learn how to do that. Again, I'm still learning a lot of this stuff. So there will be, if uh, I need, so you can get a better shot. I may have uh, my assistant, which is my lovely wife, standing over me with the camera shooting down on it so you can see what I'm doing. We'll see how that works out. But that will be getting done here in the next few days. This will be getting cleaned up and taken care of. This will be getting taken care of. And I'll be packing up the lobster shack over here and dreaming about an O-scale lobster shack. Somewhere on my layout, there will be uh, a seaside area because being from New England, the ocean... The sea is uh, in my blood, so somewhere there, there will be an O-scale lobster shack, <clears throat> and this may be nearby. Again, hobbits, who's to say, right? We don't know. I'm going to have fun. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you next time.